and we're recording. So in this next video, I would like to address the question of, okay, we, we've got this idea that we've got snapshots that contain uh, our, you know, our, our code, our directories of source code files. And we've talked about change sets, the changes that we make to those files. And we've talked about how if we have one version, we can apply a patch to it and we can get the next version. What does the version control system actually need to store about this? Well, this is a little bit like an equation. You've got three elements, but two of them are related to the third. So the answer is that we can choose um, when we write version control systems what we're going to store. And we need to store two of those, but whichever two we pick, we can work out the third. So we could, if here is a simple version control history of an initial revision and two subsequent revisions, we could decide that what we're going to do is we're just going to store the snapshots directly. We are just going to, every time you make a commit, I'm going to store a copy of all of the code that you've got in that snapshot. Now, this, it turns out, is actually pretty similar to what Git does. Uh, initially, you might think, surely that's terribly inefficient. Every time you're committing your code, aren't you generating a new copy of all that code and it's just going to build up and take up lots and lots of space? Um, well, Git can do some clever things to make storage efficient. One of them is when you make changes and you do your next commit, the chances are that you've only actually edited a few of the files. So all of the files that you haven't changed, it doesn't need to restore those. It just needs to know you haven't changed them. And it just needs to, you know, have a pointer to the version of that file that hasn't been changed. And so Git is built upon what it calls a content addressed file system, where what it does is anything that's stored in Git it runs a cryptographic algorithm over it to generate a very long number, a hash uh, that is pretty much unique to that contents. And so if you put the same file in, you'll get the same hash. And so your next commit has, um, you know, all of the files that are unchanged will actually be um, generate the same hash and it'll see well I've already got something stored against that hash so that must be that file so I don't need to restore that file and so it, it effectively can do you know that's a pretty simple thing that it can do not restoring unchanged files um, but then it can do other things in terms of having a look at the ones that have changed and how they've changed so it can do some clever algorithms to try and make the the storage efficient we could decide but actually what we're going to do is we're going to store change sets going backwards. We're going to store the current, the latest version as is, which makes it really quick to go and grab that one. But for all of the previous ones, we're just going to store, if you like, the patches going backwards. We're going to store a change that would be able, you know, we'd be able to apply uh, to calculate what the previous version was. And from that one, we can apply the next change to calculate what the previous version from that one was. And this is, you know, it's very nice and efficient for getting the current version. But if you can imagine if you're up to revision 1390 and you want to check out revision 2, you've got 1388 patches that it's going to have to apply to work out what revision 2 looked like. And so that could be a little bit slow. Uh, this is the scheme that one of the original version control systems, uh, RCS, uh, which is still installed on most uh, Linux and Unix systems, uh, used. So you, you, you can play around with RCS if you like, and uh, you should see that this is the scheme that RCS used. You could alternatively decide, I'm going to store the first revision, and then I'm going to store change sets going forwards. And that would be really quick for getting out the, the first revision. Um, but then if you were up to revision 1938 and you want to check out the latest version, you'd have 1938 patches to apply. And of course, that's going to turn out to be really inefficient because usually people want to check out the current version. Uh, it's less often they want to check out a past version of the code. Um, but you could also do other... Um, you know, clever ways of making re retrieving newer vision revisions efficient, such as occasionally storing an intermediate snapshot. And if you've used a version control system called Subversion, um, this is essentially what it does. It stores particular versions and patchings going forwards, um, but it has a little algorithm about uh, which 
versions along the way it's going to keep verbatim to try and make it efficient checking out current versions. Um, so there's a number of different schemes that are in a number of different systems uh, but whichever scheme you're using you can always get both the snapshot and the diff you know the, the, any of the snapshots and the diff between any of the revisions.